Right. So, uh, welcome to WRS uh, 062, Lesson 1, Week 1. Uh, today, we are going to talk about academic writing, uh, which I think uh, quite a lot of you are quite unfamiliar with. Uh, back in high school, the type of writing that you would normally be asked to do would be um, descriptive or very narrative pieces of writing. Uh, but when you are at university, it changes to a more formal, uh, factual kind of writing. So today we're just going to talk about uh, the differences between what is known as academic writing in tertiary education and uh, the writing that you are commonly used to in school. Okay, so first of all, um, what is academic writing? Um, I'm not quite sure whether you have come across this kind of writings before, but if you make a comparison between, say, a newspaper article and something which you find online, uh, such as reports or even research papers, the first difference that you see between these two pieces of writing is the style in which they are written. Okay, so basically, uh, <clears throat> reports and presentations and research paper uses a very academic style of writing. What does it do? Uh, first of all, uh, it's a very factual kind of uh, writing that has one, of course, uh, excellent grammar in that sense. And the tone that you use uh, for your academic writing has to be very consistent as well. Yeah, uh, We try to avoid very descriptive writing because when you use very descriptive writing, you are taking up a lot of, uh, should I say, you're using some words that are often repetitive and it becomes very lengthy. So you have to always remember that academic writing is straight to the point, it's very factual and it's very precise. Okay, next. Uh, we're going to look at tone and formality in academic writing. So basically, for academic tone, um, one thing that you will notice in academic writing is the language is often very different. Yeah, It's very formal, it's very professional. So in most cases, academic writing skills are um, written for a specific audience. That means your audience is someone who's working in the professional world. Now, if you are in the field of education, for example, if you write a research paper, your um, audience would often be other lecturers or other people in uh, the education field who have the same kind of uh, lang uh, understanding, knowledge, and also uh, jargons. So jargons are specific words only known by those in specific fields um, and we all have shared knowledge of this so basically academic writing is very targeted in that sense okay now moving on when you are writing an academic piece of writing you want to make sure that one is very precise so you need to look for very accurate accurate words because uh, you're trying to cut down on the number of uh, repetitions or even adjectives that you use okay now the lesser adjective is actually better because you are not trying to describe something you are just explaining a finding or a report as you have read and you then present it to uh, the audience that you're writing for okay now another um, very important facet of academic writing is you shouldn't use any idioms okay uh, don't use figurative speech as well for example hyperbole paradox personification or simile now idioms are things like um, strike while the iron is hot uh, you know um, uh, there's no use crying over spilled milk or all these things so these are normally used for compositions or essays they are not used for academic writing okay hyperbole means you are exaggerating yeah so uh, maybe let's say for example you go fishing and someone asks you, okay, how big is the fish that you caught? And you extend your hand to the fullest or the, the longest cap capacity that you can. And you say, it's this big. So that is known as an exaggeration. Okay, so we try to avoid all these things because it's not academic. Again, for non-academic essays or compositions, yes, it's accepted, but not for academic writing in university. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to academic writing, you want to try and avoid using narration as well. You're not supposed to be too descriptive about your standpoint or about a report. You're just supposed to summarize okay, and synthesize the findings that you have read. What does synthesize mean? It means that you are reading a few different articles and what you do is you actually combine the ideas within that article 
to form maybe an argument or a paragraph. Okay, so the second lesson I will be talking about um, how to make strong arguments. So you don't have to worry about that now. Okay. All right. Now, academic writing is very concerned about facts. Everything has to be factual. So you can't really insert too much of your own opinion in that sense. So we try to avoid using words like I strongly feel or uh, I strongly argue or it is very uh, wrong to do something like this. So those are all feelings and biases. We try to avoid that in academic writing. You need to be fair. You need to consider two sides of the argument, two sides of any issue that you're reading and present them in a way that uh, is not biased or leaning towards one side. Okay, Why do we do that? Because academic writing, you try to be objective. Okay, Now, written academic English is very different from spoken English. Basically, for spoken English, we can be a bit informal. Uh, for example, when you say um, the hypermarket sells a lot of goods, that is a bit more informal. A more formal academic way to actually um, write this or actually uh, use it in academics, academic context is hypermarkets often offer various selection of consumer products. So you can see there's a very huge difference between the way these two sentences are written. Yeah, very formal. The other one is informal. Okay. Now, these are a few kinds of, of types of languages to avoid when you are actually doing academic writing. So first of all, you try to avoid using pronouns, okay? So normally, we would discourage you from using the word I, you, your, you will, uh, yours, and so on, okay? Uh, or try try to not use, um, you know, slash pronouns, for example, she or he, her or his, him or her, themselves, ourselves, and yourselves, okay? So basically, what we want you to do is um, you use the plural form for both nouns and pronouns. So you can just say, in order to do well in a class, a student needs to do his homework well. Okay, for example. Or, every leader should develop his communication skill. Okay, so you only want to use the slash gender when you need to stress on the action of an individual. For example, if you must use a technical term that he may not understand, he or she may need to explain it better. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, now um, next we are going to talk about cliches. Okay, cliches is something that you really want to avoid um, using in academic context. Uh, sorry, in non-academic context because cliches are very overused expressions. Okay, now this is what we try to tell our students not to use. I know in high school your teachers might have asked you to start off with uh, as we read in the newspaper or as we all know, you know, these are all very normal ways in which we start off our essay. Um, and sometimes we like to use words like in a nutshell, all in all, since the beginning of time, better late than never. These are all cliches that we want to try and avoid. Again, why? Because cliches, they are quite descriptive and they are not formal. So you want to avoid using these kind of words because you need to focus on using very accurate words. Okay. So instead of saying in a nutshell, you can just say in conclusion, okay, or taking together the findings of the report, something like that. Yeah, you need to make sure it's very precise, right? Now we want to also avoid using colloquialism. So colloquialism is expressions that are used in conversational language only, and it causes your um, writing to be very informal. Okay, so some of the, of the colloquialisms that people often use would be contractions. So instead of using the word cannot, we often shorten it to be can't. Okay, uh, will not, won't, would not, would have, or, or wouldn't. Okay, and did not, didn't. Okay, so these are all contractions. So you have to actually write out the full word because the full word is actually more academic. All right. Now we want to avoid using fillers as well. When it's in speech, it's fine because we all need fillers to uh, kind of like make the transition between you know certain sentences a bit clearer. But in you do if you do your writing, you want to avoid using words like like or well or anyway. That's not really accepted uh, for academic writing. Okay. Now uh, the most important is please avoid using slangs. 
So don't use words like uh, instead of saying children, you say kids. Instead of saying policemen, you say cops. Instead of saying uh, a man, you say a guy. Okay. Instead of saying um, uh, it's difficult, it's a hassle. So these are all slangs that are perfectly acceptable when you are talking, but not when you're writing. Now you also have to remember when you use this kind of contractions, fillers, or slang, it makes your writing very inconsistent. It makes it sound less professional and it makes it sound less academic, which is what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Okay. Now we also want to make sure we don't use linguistic shortcuts. What are linguistic shortcuts? These are normally used in your WhatsApp conversations. For example, LOL for laughing out loud. OMG. Oh my God. NYTE. Okay. ASAP. So don't use that in your academic writing because you are not WhatsApping your lecturer. You are not WhatsApping your audience. You have to write in proper sentences. Okay. Next, don't use ambiguous expressions or words. So if you want to re refer to something specific, you have to say, uh, let's say for example, in this report, findings showed that the disease is contagious. Okay. So very precise. Don't say uh, this thing uh, shows that something is deathly. You can't use that. It's too ambiguous. Okay, so avoid using words like many things, anything, a few things. Don't use the word etc. Okay, or etc. If you can't think of anything else, you just end your sentence there. Okay, don't use and many more and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, exaggerations, I talked about this before. Uh, it's also known as hyperbole. So basically, exaggerations are discouraged because you try to make your, uh, again, your report as academic as possible. Don't use words like, these findings are awesome. Okay, uh, results were amazing. Uh, the findings are superb. So don't use words like that. Um, try to avoid using superlatives as well. The biggest, the strongest, the greatest. Just present it as it is, as you have already read from any of the books or magazines or websites that you have actually read. Yeah. Okay, now, very, very important as well, and this is a pet peeve, probably for me and some of your other lecturers, don't use question marks or exclamation marks in your essay. Okay? I know in high school, probably your teacher said it's okay, but don't use exclamation marks. You are not screaming at your audience and you are not supposed to ask questions because nobody can answer the question when we are reading your writing. Yeah, so this is not necessary for you to ask questions or to use exclamation. Again, be objective, not biased. All right. Okay, so when it comes to academic vocabulary, please read the slides because there are quite a lot of words that you may want to recheck and see whether you use it in conversation and whether it's suitable to be used in a academic context. Yeah, so you've got the list there. Please read your slides. Okay. All right. So basically that's it. I hope that you have managed to capture quite a bit of information that's necessary for you. Uh, don't worry too much about um, academic versus non-academic writing at the moment because again, when you start doing your writing and when you give us your progress check, we'll make sure to highlight if you've done any of this and we can work together to make your essay more academic. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. Take care.